in a fucking student, nigga. You already know the fucking vibes. No cap. Booze in my pocket, thought to say I'm getting sick. I'm dripping in his island, now they stick I'm hitting licks. Boy, I bust up. They found a plan to make you rich. Middle finger up, boy, I hate it. So this one is the twisted case of Connor Hilton. Let's see what it's about. 17 minutes. All units 10 3. It now appears as though shots are being fired. Confirmed by the complainant. All units responding proceed with extreme caution. Nestled among lush, tree-shaded avenues and well-manicured gardens, a seemingly serene house in the tranquil town of Friendswood, Texas, became the unlikely stage for a chilling crime. The type of tragedy that has, regrettably, become an all-too-familiar narrative in American society. It began as an ordinary gathering of teenagers, a scene mirrored in countless communities nationwide. Yet, this particular evening took a harrowing turn catapulting four young lives into a nightmarish sequence of events that would lead each of them to unexpected destinations. A hospital bed, a jail cell, and tragically, the cold stillness of an embalming table. Let's dive into the profoundly sad case of murder in Friendswood. Mm. Guess it wasn't that friendly. Badoom! Badoom! Crash! I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all be having to deal with me. I'm just... I be trying. Hey. Yeah. It's a crime scene. You don't enter fucking bitch. And I'll be out here over. And I uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-u
Niggas was as soon as he heard the shots. gunfire, the male in the restroom barricaded himself inside and used his cell phone to call 911. He told the emergency dispatcher about the two gunshots he heard coming from within the house and mentioned that there were additional people present inside the residence. Police were routed to the Mission Estates neighborhood and arrived less than two minutes later. As they approached the home, one officer observed a woman speaking with a visibly distraught teenage male seated on a street curb near the residence. The officer confronted the teen and asked if anyone was hurt. The boy nodded his head, held up two fingers, and said, There's two teenagers inside. I think they're dead. The officer quickly entered the residence through the front door and located the emergency caller still hiding in the bathroom. According to the caller, after the gunshots, he heard the suspected shooter walk by the bathroom door, crying, and in a moment of sudden realization or shock at his own actions, stated, What have I done? The second officer entered the residence and immediately observed the carnage. He saw one male subject lying on the floor wearing a black t-shirt, and black shorts. Damn. Underneath his head, there was a pool of blood from an apparent gunshot. He was later identified. Yo, I'm not. This is gonna sound crazy and off topic, kind of sort of whatever. But that just made me think, like, what if you like get shot and you're wearing a trash fit, bro? Listen, let me talk to y'all, cause y'all gonna be. I got. I gotta go full screen for y'all real quick. What if you d get shot and die and you're wearing the worst fit imaginable, bro? I'll be pissed. Like, if I got shot right now wearing these fucking SpongeBob fucking pants, bro, I'm not trying to show you my cock, so I'm not going to show y'all, but I'm wearing SpongeBob pajama pants with a gray t-shirt and the socks are tied up, or like the socks are rise above the um, fucking pants. So I got the pants tucked into the socks. Like it's cold outside. If I got caught lacking in a fit like this, bro, boy, I tell you, I don't know what I would do. I'm a haunt. I got a horn nigga, bro. You caught me lacking with SpongeBob pants? Damn. And you know everything's so digital now. Day from day and J. Lacking. I'm just saying, bro. If I got caught like, bro, imagine you get you get shot wearing a clown outfit. Imagine, or you wearing some type of fucking mascot outfit, bro. You would be pissed. I would be pissed. To be honest with you, I would be pissed. I got caught lacking, and I'm wearing some dumb shit, bro. Bro, imagine getting caught lacking with a morph suit. A morph. Fucking suit. I'm just saying, bro. I'm just saying. Anyways, let's get back to the video. Whoa. You are. Divide as 18 year old Ethan Riley. Towards the back of the residence, a second male was observed lying on his back. He also appeared to have sustained a gunshot wound to the head. He was identified as 19-year-old Benjamin Blyick. The they could have put a picture of my man with a teal handle and gray finish on a table inside the residence. Ambulances arrived quickly, and both injured teenagers were transported to separate hospitals, where they were listed in critical condition. The shooting suspect was identified as 17-year-old Friendswood resident Connor Hilton. It was his family's... That nigga looked like he got no soul. And not because he, he a ginger. He just don't look like he got a soul. Look at his eyes. It's nothing behind those eyes, bro. Bad thoughts. Like, he looked like he would be a school shooter, bro. No funny shit. It's just the, the vibes he give off. His residence where the shootings transpired. Hilton was taken to the Friendswood Police Department for questioning. Upon arrival, officers immediately subjected Hilton to gunshot residue testing of his hands. While reviewing his social media accounts, police learned that just days earlier, Hilton posted an ominous picture of himself on Instagram with captioned lyrics from a rap song that read, Murder One, Better Run, 
Oh yeah, about to meet my gun. Killing plenty is so fun. At 38 minutes... It's the it's the Drake face for me. Look, look, look it's this face. I'm gonna shoot you. His gun sound probably sound like get up. That's what his shit sound like. It's <laughs> his shit sound like ah, ah. Get, get, get. Look at him. Bro, imagine your op. It's not funny because people actually die, but imagine your op look like this. Uh, uh, uh. Like, come on, bro. It's past midnight. Hilton was read his Miranda rights and agreed to speak without an attorney present. According to a probable cause affidavit, Hilton told Detective McCandless that earlier that evening, the two victims and a third friend arrived at his home together at his request. Hilton told the detective he possessed a handgun that he talked his mother into buying for him. The attorney representing Connor Hilton would later dispute this claim. In a published report by the Galveston County Daily News, authored by Michael A. Smith, attorney Jennifer Carpenter said in an email statement, Connor's mother did not purchase a gun for him. In Texas, making a firearm accessible to a child is categorized as a Class C misdemeanor. Damn, this nigga almost got his mom booked. That's crazy. He tried to throw his moms under the bus. Niggas is wildin'. During the interview, Hilton made it clear to Detective McCandless that the reason he had the gun was to shoot someone and or himself. Hilton explained that all of his friends were in the main area of the residence when he began to show them the firearm. Authorities allege Hilton denied there was a prior altercation, disagreement, or anything any of the individuals did to provoke the shooting. Hilton went on to describe what happened inside the house. He said once he decided to... Bro, imagine being that one, the one friend who was in the bathroom, bro. Bro, you know how, like, I don't know what to say, bro, but lucky he was, bro. To shoot his three <laughs> friends, he stood up pointed the gun at Ethan Riley first, and pulled the trigger, shooting him in the left side of his head. Next, he turned to his right, pointed the firearm at Benjamin Blyick, and observed Blyick raise his hands defensively. Despite this, he shot Benjamin in the left side of his head. As far as a motive, officers allege Hilton admitted to Detective McCandless that he had long thought about and desired to kill a person. He said, this nigga is Dexter Morgan, bro, without the meticulous planning. He wanted to know what it was like. Unbeknownst to his friends, the opportunity presented itself that evening. Hilton stated he fully understood what he had done and agreed he should be held liable. Hilton was initially charged with two counts of aggravated assault causing great bodily injury while the district attorney's office said they were working on upgrading the charges. He was booked into the Galveston County Jail, and his bond was set at $600,000, which increased to $1 million the next day. Much to the chagrin of the victim's loved ones, Hilton was able to post bail. How? How? And he was released on Christmas Eve, in time to enjoy the Christmas holiday with his family. This did not sit well with the Friendswood Police Department who took to social media to inform community members that the bond requirements did not include GPS monitoring or any conditions that provide extra security for the community given the violent actions of Hilton. Unfortunately for Hilton, this gift was subject to return. On Christmas Eve, it was reported with great sadness that Ethan Riley had passed away due to his injuries. Damn. Consequently, Hilton's charges were upgraded to murder. An arrest warrant was promptly issued, and in a display of force, officers swarmed his family's home on Christmas night with guns drawn. Friends with police. Imagine you eating your roasted chicken with broccoli and mashed potatoes, and this, and you, all you get is boom, 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 it's the police. Boom. That's crazy, bro.
swarm the home of a 17-year-old now murder suspect. The Friends of Police Department, we have a warrant. Come open the door now. Still no movement from inside the home. The officer gets back on the bullhorn. We have a warrant. Come to the door now. Make sure you have your hands in the air. Minutes later, the door opens, and Connor Hilton is walked out in handcuffs and arrested. Any comment? Hilton Nigga has shorts was arrested on. earlier cool. this week after two men were shot on LaSalle Street where he lives. One of the victims, 18-year-old Eric Riley, died at the hospital, and the other victim is still in critical condition, according to police. Hilton was originally charged with two counts of aggravated assault causing serious bodily injury. His bond was raised to $1 million, which he was able to post on Sunday, allowing him to spend Christmas with his family at home. That is until officers showed up at his front door with a new warrant. Hilton is now charged with murder. He was taken to the Friendswood City Jail before he's going to be transferred to the Galveston County Jail. Mm -mm. Soon after, a local threw away his fucking life. ABC News affiliate tracked down some of Hilton's relatives. Family members showed up at his family's house today. Work with ABC 13 News. Are you Connor's parents? No, ma'am. Are you family members? We are. Any comment about this? These new charges? Uh, I don't know anything about any new charges. He was charged with murder. Okay, yeah. Any that's, comment that's, on that? That's not me. No comment. No ma'am. What about his million dollar bond? Do family members plan to bail him out this Have time? No information on that, ma'am. Hilton now faces murder charges for the fatal shooting of 18 year old Ethan Riley. At the time of this upload, Hilton has been denied bail and remains in custody. Meanwhile, Benjamin Blyke is still hospitalized in critical condition. After Hilton's second arrest, his defense lawyers quickly filed several legal requests. One of these requests, submitted on December 27th, asks the court to exclude from the trial any statements that Hilton made to any law enforcement officer immediately following his arrest. In a separate motion filed on December 29th, Hilton's attorneys requested the court consider a bond of $500,000. Per online records, Hilton is scheduled to appear in court for a status conference on February 2nd at 8.30 a.m. The Hilton family issued the following statement to the media through their attorney. The parents of Connor Hilton cannot express enough their deepest condolences to the victim's families who have been heavily on the Hilton's hearts and minds as they try to navigate this devastating situation. Details about Ethan Riley and Benjamin Blyak are currently sparse in the public domain, as it is still very early. Yeah, they, they don't got no photo of my mans, bro. That's so disrespectful. Put a photo up. In this case, with new developments unfolding daily. Blyak, who is critically ill, has a family that understandably has had limited interaction with the media, either due to not being reached or choosing to maintain their privacy during this challenging time. Consequently, they have not shared any public statements about the situation. On the other hand, Ethan's family set up a GoFundMe page to assist with funeral expenses, and the community rallied to ensure their significant goal was met within a matter of days. The individual who called 911 from the bathroom has not been publicly identified by authorities. Connor Lynn Hilton is a 17-year-old Texas resident born on September 14, 2006. He resides with his parents in a two-story, four-bedroom, two-and-a-half-bathroom house in Friendswood's Mission Estates neighborhood, valued at around $400,000. Like many of his peers, he is fond of video games. He is also notably athletic, as seen on his Instagram page, which primarily showcases him performing backflips in various places. At one point, Hilton had a second Instagram account, which has since been deactivated. So far, there's no clear information regarding any past criminal activities, mental health issues, or... Can't trust niggas who do backflips. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. ...substance abuse. However, there will undoubtedly be significant attention on his previously expressed desire to commit murder. His prior statements about wanting to own a gun to harm himself or others suggest potential mental health concerns that are likely to be a major focus in the upcoming trial, assuming there is no plea deal.
This case raises numerous questions, legal and otherwise, highlighting the complexities of reporting on developing stories. Balancing the delivery of newsworthy cases with the availability of substantial information is always a challenge and much remains uncertain in this situation. At first glance, the case against Connor Hilton might seem straightforward. There's a witness to the shootings, an alleged confession to the police, and forensic evidence ostensibly linking Hilton to the suspected murder weapon. Yet, legal proceedings are seldom straightforward. One key question is, were Ethan and Benjamin lured to Hilton's home for the purpose of being killed, or was it decided on a spur of the moment? Also, will the district attorney charge Hilton with capital murder? Despite his alleged incriminating statements, defense strategies in similar cases in the past have included claims of self-defense or diminished responsibility, arguing that the accused was not in a sound state of mind. Successfully arguing these points could potentially reduce the charges from murder to manslaughter, significantly impacting the potential prison sentence. Of course, Hilton's age is a crucial factor. In Texas, what is commonly referred to as first-degree murder is legally termed capital murder, a first-degree felony that can result in life imprisonment or the death penalty for adults. However, as a juvenile, Hilton is exempt from capital punishment. But suppose Hilton is tried as an adult. Well, under Section 12.31 of the Texas Penal Code, offenders under 18 convicted of capital murder will face an automatic life sentence with parole eligibility after 40 years. If tried within the juvenile justice system and convicted, he may receive a determinate sentence of up to 40 years. Furthermore, according to the Department of Justice, the overwhelming majority, 90 to 95 percent, of criminal cases result in plea bargaining. Therefore, the likelihood of that outcome should not be overlooked. As we follow the developments of this case, it's heartbreakingly clear that what started as a time of holiday cheer and small gathering of friends Bro, that sucks, bro. You sent your kids somewhere thinking they're going to be safe at their friends, bro. That's some bullshit. Has tragically turned it. He need to be locked up and thrown, and the key needs to be thrown away. Don't let this man out. To a story of brutality reportedly Take instigated by a troubled teenager against his own friends. The families of Ethan Riley and Benjamin Blyak, along with the local community, are holding on to hope that the Texas court system will deliver justice and closure, helping them to find some peace. Despite the darkness of this tragedy, the strength and the unity of the community offer a glimmer of hope and resilience in the face of adversity. That was a good John. I like that one. That was a good story. Uh, but, oh my God. Your boy gets sleep. Oh. Anyway, guys, like, comment, subscribe, post noties. Hope you guys enjoyed the live stream. Hope you guys, if you're watching this now on YouTube, hope you enjoyed the murder mystery. We're back with streaming. We're back with content. See you, boys and girls, in the next one. Wait, hold up. Whoa. Let me show. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the post notice. I love you, boys and girls, because we're not sexist. Here's a kiss from me. You want.